Hello, it's Father Rich here in another corner of the dining room at the Our Lady of Peace Rectory for our next masterpiece. Um, I thought of this picture that I got in Egypt, a papyrus of St. George, who is the uh, this patron saint of the school, the Paris I grew up at, St. George here in Erie. So I've had that framed ever since uh, for about 25 years. Um, and uh, great devotion to St. George there and also in England where we just uh, got, I just got back from a pilgrimage where he is the patron saint of the Catholic, or the church, of the whole country uh, in England. Um, but it made me think of, in addition to this book, this is a book called Joan of Arc by Mark Twain. On the cover, it says a quote from Mark Twain. I like Joan of Arc best of all my books, and it is the best. Interestingly enough, he was so inspired by the story of Joan of Arc that he wanted to write a, a story about it, um, and he did so. So I've actually I've actually read it, um, and and um, and so in the midst of trying to learn more about Joan of Arc, I came across this next masterpiece, which even uh, I ended up watching. It's a film called The Passion of Joan of Arc by Carl Theodore Dreyer. And uh, it was done in 1928. So this was kind of in the, in the midst of the silent movie um, genre. And um, it actually, I believe, was the last silent movie that Dreyer did. But uh, he was actually from Denmark and uh, Copenhagen, born in 1889, and um, ended up finding that he had a real uh, knack for, uh, work, started working in film, did some editing, eventually kind of graduated to directing, and it really became evident that he had a knack for it. Um, so this is kind of considered a classic. Uh, they, you know, some people argue maybe one of the best films of all time. Um, I have to admit, for me, it's a hard thing to enter into, being kind of spoiled by modern movies and the level of uh, visual effect as well as the sound effects. Um, so it's, it's hard, it was harder for me to fully enter into it. Certainly tells the story. They based it off of documentation of her trial. Uh, remember she was lived in the 1400s, was a great uh, military leader for the French in fighting against the English. Um, remember the English for, for centuries, uh, extended their land into what is now Northern France and had, had uh, part of their country of England was in on the continental Europe. Um, and this was during that time. Uh, but eventually, and they mentioned that um, the, the time of St. George, and he's affiliated as the early church, when martyrdom would have come from the empires that Christianity was conflicting with. Now, this is more about the inner church rivals. And, um, and unfortunately, St. Joan of Arc was uh, condemned for what they thought was to be some kind of uh, heretical teaching or... Um, what they saw is she got accused of being kind of uh, involved in type of spiritual spirituality that wasn't uh, Christian, um, almost witchcraft because she talked about having visions. Um, and then obviously there it became very political because there were um, she she was you know killed by the uh, English court that she was taken uh, prisoner by, and they accused her you know of. Um, of false worship, so to speak. So they, but they say that the, the emotion that uh, this movie was able to capture, um, Dreyer really, they, that he wanted to parallel it to the, the passion of Jesus, um, and really show that parallel and this heroic kind of fidelity that St. Joan of Arc had to her faith and standing firm. She eventually, you know, after being kind of, you know, mistreated, so to speak, um, she eventually caved and, and admitted her uh, heresy, but then um, once she got her strength back, she kind of recanted, and she ended up being burned alive. Um, so again, for its type of work, really amazing. The the actress that played Joan of Arc, Renee Falconetti, they say does a wonderful job in the way she portrayed the emotion and just the realism. One of the things was the dryer, the director, he wanted no one to wear makeup. He wanted to be very real, but he did close-ups of the faces to really try to capture the emotion. Again, these were things that weren't being done as much in that time. So um, so she did this uh, film, and this was her first film and her last film that she did on The Passion of Joan of Arc, the actress. Um, but Dreyer uh, would go, he would make other movies 
the Day of Wrath in 1943. Um, they say that he would uh, usually not have the funding to do his movies, so he would go for like a decade without doing anything and then get the money and make a couple movies and then have another drought. So, um, you know, he kind of had a stretch in 1919, did the movie called Leaves from Satan's Books, and then didn't make another one till Vampire, 1932, Day of Wrath in 43, then The Word, Ordette in 1954, kind of a Romeo and Juliet uh, sort of thing. Um, but kind of looked at the, pro he looked a lot of light uh, on the unhealthy persecution um, of members of the church that would happen from the authorities um, and from leaders in the church. So that was a big focal point, kind of the, the division and the discord amongst the church and the challenges that that would provide. Um, they say that he once referred to his filmmaking as realized mysticism. So another one of these people that wanted to make the spiritual very real um, and bring um, the divine into to capture it in film. So um, they say that he one of his dreams was to make a biography of Jesus, a film. And he had written the script, but unfortunately he died before he was able to actualize it. And his last uh, movie that he did... They was actually kind of a, the Ordet, which dealt with um, a resurrection, was a trial run for him to doing the life of Christ, but then he never got to do it. So uh, again, if you watch it, it's a little challenging to watch, but I encourage you to at least get a taste of it and good to be aware of The Passion of Joan of Arc, uh, an early silent film on a great saint and martyr of our church. And that's our Masterpiece 48. Next time we'll do uh, 49 or Masterpiece Head of Christ by Georges Renault. It's a painting from 1937. So thank you for joining me. Have a great day and God bless.